had the great things to happen during the sass and the praying at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi. Okay, God bless you all. Thank you all for coming. Blessings and Come on in. How y'all doing tonight? Good God, to see you guys. And I pray the blessings all right. of God on her. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just lift you up. Come on, people of God, let's swipe and share. We're going to get these numbers up. We're going to get these, you know, get the momentum, keep it going. Amen, amen, amen. I'm so excited about this teaching. So, tonight, we're going to talk about seven advantages of fasting. Seven advantages of fasting. There's so many benefits of fasting, but I can only give you seven before because of time's sake. So, I pray that you just take notes because I'm going to give you some meat tonight. Amen. So take some notes and I'm excited. I'm so excited. All right. So God, we just thank you, Father God, for your presence, God. We thank you, Father God, that you um, just give us revelation of the word, God. I pray that our hearts are receptive, God, to the word in Jesus name. Blessings, blessings, blessings. All right. So, you know, a lot of people right now, you're fasting, you're seeking God for something. Amen. So I just pray this stares you up. I pray that this does something to you to make you want to stand firm, stay the course and not break the fast, but continue to keep going. Amen. We need to stand firm in the Lord and in the power of his might. So I'm going to give you seven advantages of fasting. All right. And if I have time, then I wish I can give more, but it's so much, but I know Pastor Jennifer, she hit on some, uh, uh, Minister Cedric Stanton, he hit on some, amen. So let's get into this. Benefit number one, advantage number one of fasting is guidance. A lot of people right now, you're saying, God, I just need clarity. I need direction. Matter of fact, every day I get an email from somebody. They want to hear the word, you know, of the Lord in, in the word of the prophet because they, they, they're not in a position to hear from God. Amen. So when you fast, you know, and I'm just getting off. Um, we hear from God a little bit clearer than usual. All right. So fasting it, you know, we get guidance. What does guidance mean? Guidance means, you know, some advice or information at resolving our problem or difficulty. Guidance also means direction. How many people on here? You need direction. You need God to, to, to give you, you know, instructions because you're like at the valley of decision you don't know if you should go to the right or you don't know if you should go to the left so you're like god i just need a word god my god so when you fast before the lord you're going to get some guidance amen listen to me if you fast before god he will send you a prophet Amen. God sits me on assignments all the time. Um, he'll he'll uh, reveal to you something in the word. Amen. Or you'll come across the confirmation, the answers that, that you're looking for. So the advantage of fasting is some guidance. All right. So let me tell you something. I went on a fast to get my next instructions for ministry. The Lord told me, hey, you're getting ready to go back to church. You're going to work the altar and lay hands, you know, and it come to pass. When did I get that? I got guidance when I went on the fast. Amen. All right. So let's get into this word right quick. Moses, he received revelation because God gave him a, an assignment. He had to write the Ten Commandments. Amen. Moses was fasting when he wrote the Ten Commandments. That, um, listen, that was an important task. That was an important job to write the Ten Commandments. We still talk about the Ten Commandments even now. Amen. Listen, when you, uh, this, this, I feel like prophesying to somebody. When you begin to seek God for counsel, God will give you instructions that's going to change the, you know, generation after generation, even though you are dead and gone a long time ago. You have no idea the impact that God will give you and make you make your life worth meaning to somebody. Amen. Listen. All right, so Moses was on a fast. Uh, Deuteronomy 9, 9, write this down. Deuteronomy 9, 9. All right, Moses was gone up in the mountain, you know, and he received some uh, tablets of stone. And, you know, uh, he was in the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. And it said, neither did I eat bread nor drink water. All right, so fasting, you know, a true fast is not fasting off of social media, Facebook. Um, I'm on a fast. What kind of fast you want? I'm not on Facebook. No, fasting is, you know, not eating anything. Amen. That is a true fast. That is a true fast. All right. Advantage number two of fasting. Write this down, protection. Somebody on here, you need protection. You, It's like the enemy's messing with you. Well, I want to prophesy as you go on this fast, it's going to get the devil off your back. My God, you know, remember, um, there was a little boy in the, in the word of God and he had a demon inside of him and the demon was making this little boy do all kind of crazy stuff. The little boy was, uh, 
you know, trying to drown himself. It was the demon in him trying to make the boy drown himself and trying to make the boy throw himself in, in, in fire. And then the disciples prayed and nothing happened. And then Jesus, they came up to Jesus later after Jesus rebuked the demon out the boy. And they said, why could we cast him out? And Jesus said, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. All right. So when you fast, listen, it's going to give you some power, number one, um, against it, those demonic forces. And it's going to have, actually put a hedge of protection around you. Because listen, the enemy knows, you know, those who walk in authority. Amen. See, the enemy, you know, he, he knows. Like the seven sons of Sceva, Sceva, they were using the name of Jesus right but they didn't have that authority they didn't have that authority so guess what the devil beat them up the devil gave them a good butt whooping my god so when you fast this is the second advantage is some protection what is that word protection that means defense that means some security that means a barrier that means refuge. You know, God is our refuge. Come on now. Amen. It says in the word, he is our refuge. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. All right. So I went on a fast for vindication from my haters. Amen. I don't listen. Where I'm at right now in my walk, I don't even like to argue. I used to have an anger issue. I used to have an anger issue so much that, hey, hey, I was on probation for two years because of anger. But then God showed me himself, hey, you don't have to act out in your flesh. Let me take care of it. And I've been seeing the hand of the Lord move ever since. Amen. So fasting, I went on the fast. I said, God, I have an issue. I need you to do this, God. You said, God, vengeance is mine. I will repay. So I went in the fast. Amen. I put that word to the test. And let me tell you something. God righted every of my wrongs. Amen. Listen. All right, so when you fast, you get protection. What, what, what do I mean protection? All right, see, the enemy tried to take uh, one of God's prophets out by the name of Daniel. Remember Daniel in the lion's den? He tried to take him out. So King Darius and uh, Cedric, uh, he, he hit on this. King Darius went on a fast. He pushed back the plate. And he fasted. He said, I don't even want y'all to play music in this place. Amen. He fasted all night. So, because he went on that fast, it was, you know, um, it, it helped the Lord put an extra hedge of protection around him and sent some angels up in that den to close the lion's mouth. My God, I'm saying some stuff tonight. Where am I getting this from? Write this scripture down. Daniel 6.18. Daniel 6.18. It says, then the king, you know, he went to his palace and he fasted throughout the night. All right. So that's powerful. Advantage number three of fasting is some deliverance. How many people need to get delivered on here from something? Jealousy, pride, lust, envy, perversion, you know, fear. My God, a lot of people right now, you need to get delivered from some stuff. I had anxiety for like five years. And the only way I can get that thing off of me was by a lot of fasting. Is it trying to fast? Oh, uh, it's trying to, sorry, it's trying to freeze. I rebuke freezing in Jesus' name. I had to do a lot of fasting. I had to do a lot of um, meditation on the right word. All right? So the word deliverance means being rescued. You need God to rescue you out of some stuff, to be set free. We know the word of God says, who the spirit of the Lord, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. That means there's liberty. All right, Jesus paid for that on the cross. All right, so you don't have to be oppressed by the devil. The word of God says Jesus Christ went around doing good works. All right, killing all those who were oppressed by the devil. Jesus Christ come to destroy the works of the devil. And I feel God in this place. I want to prophesy that you're about to get delivered tonight in Jesus' name. I set forth the fire of God on you. All right, so Isaiah uh, 58 in verse 6 Pastor Jennifer talked about some of this stuff tonight, a little bit about Isaiah 58 and verse 6. Listen, the word of God says, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? To loose the bands of wickedness? To That's powerful. See, the enemy got a stronghold on some of you. I prophesy, when you go on a fast, when you seek the face of God, those demonic strongholds are going to break in Jesus' name. Amen? You know, it says to undo the heavy burdens. A lot of people right now, you're burdened down in life. You got things weigh, weighing you down. You know, Jesus wants to set you free, my God. He wants to set you free tonight. All right, so when you fast, it's going to undo some of those heavy burdens in life. 
It also says to let the oppressed go free. When you fast, you're going to get delivered from those demonic oppressions. In Jesus' name. Alright? And when you fast, it's going to break every yoke. Break every demonic yoke. This He's going to... When you fast, I'm telling you, the power of God is going to hit your life. And you're going to get a turnaround. See, a lot of people here... And both Pastor Jennifer and Cedric talked about this. You know, when you fast, you need to pray. That's powerful. You know what I call it? I call it like a, a double black eye. You know, I'm telling you, that's powerful. That is powerful, my God. So, when you fast, you want to get some deliverance from something. Amen? All right. So, King Jehoshaphat, he had an issue. I love talking about This is like my favorite uh, chapter in the Bible. Second Chronicles 20. I always talk about it. It is powerful for so many reasons. All right. So in 2 Chronicles 20, if you read that chapter, this king had an issue. He had three other kingdoms, three other kings trying to come up against him. You know what he did? He proclaimed the fast. He proclaimed the fast. That is powerful. He proclaimed the fast. And guess what? He got some deliverance. Whoa, he got some deliverance. Amen. He, he, didn't get, he did not get a breakthrough until after he fasted. Amen. See, it was in, in, in Second Chronicles 20. I'm trying to stay on course and go through my notes. But it's, it's so much revelation in that one chapter. All right. He went on a fast. The word of the Lord came to the prophet. And then he gave him instructions. He obeyed the instruction. That's another word for somebody. God saying, I need you to obey. All right. And after he obeyed the instructions, um, he put praise dancers in front of the, the army. They didn't even have to fight. It was the Lord's battle. As they begin to praise, the Lord ambushed the army. Amen. That's powerful. That is powerful. All right. The next advantage. Number four. Hearing from God. When you fast, you're going to hear from God. A lot of people right now, my God, it's like you're not on the right channel, the right frequency in the realm of the spirit to hear. You know, maybe you are hearing, but it ain't the voice of God. You know, maybe it's your own thoughts. Maybe it's the devil's voice. But when you fast, you're going to begin to hear from God. There's still a small voice in your head. Sometimes it's like a little whisper. But you got to you gotta have communion. You, you got to be able to commune with the Holy Spirit to get to know him, right? You're in a relationship. You're in a covenant, right? With God. All right. So when you fast, you get to hear from God. So it allows your ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. All right. So... I, as a prophet, I have to live a fasted lifestyle. It is required. See, fasting, like I think Pastor Jennifer said this, it shouldn't just be for one month. You know, I mean, it shouldn't be just uh, when, when the church fasts corporately. You know, we should make make it a lifestyle. Fast like at least once a month. Fast at least once a week or something. See, too much is given, much more is required. And I want to prophesy, in this new year, much more is required of you. Because a lot of people on here, you're asking God for so many things things it's like you got suitcases and luggages on that altar and it's piled super duper high jesus but as you fast you're gonna hear god and you're you're gonna get the revelation that you're seeking him for so i gotta live a fasted lifestyle amen i gotta live i'm telling i like that fast 10 percent of your money that's powerful i like that that is powerful so let me let me give you this revelation all right. See, Elijah, he was a prophet. This prophet prayed down fire from heaven. He prayed down fire from heaven. All right. So when we read the word, I think it's in 1 Kings 18. He was com confrontational. He challenged the false prophets of Baal and Azeroth. He said, if your God is real, let him pray down fire from heaven. So this prophet prayed down fire from heaven. And at the end of the day, and then when Jezebel got wind of that thing, she threatened his life. So he, you know, got discouraged and he was praying to die. And, you know, uh, God sent an angel. God sent an angel to give him some supernatural food. All right. And listen, after, after he ate whatever the angel gave him, he went on a 40-day fast. Amen. He went on a 40-day fast. All right, so Elijah, he did not hear from God again till after he got off that 40-day fast. Let's go to the Word. Write these scriptures down. 1 Kings 19. 1 Kings 19, 8 and 9, verses 8 and 9. All right, so Elijah, he ate the angel food, I call it. He arose and he did eat and drink, and he went in that strength 
for what? 40 days and 40 nights. So he didn't eat anything. He went to Mount Horeb, Horeb you know, the Mount of God. And guess what? The word of the Lord came to him. The word of the Lord came to him. So that means he heard God again after 40 days, 40 nights. You know, I'm not saying you got to fast 40 days to hear from God, but he went on a fast to hear from God, to get, you know, the revelation, to get, you know, his next assignment. All right. Uh, I think advantage number five is favor. How many people on here, you need favor. You need God to do something supernatural in your life. You need the miraculous to happen. You know, I, I cannot afford to, to, to miss out on my next level in my next dimension in God. I cannot afford to miss this next move. You need some favor. Jesus, what does that mean? Favor, that means approval. How many of y'all need God to approve something? A lot of people, y'all been here, no, 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 no for so long. But God's promises are yes and amen. So when you, I'm telling you, oh God, when God pours out his favor on your life, you're going to hear yeses after yeses after yeses. And get ready. It's a lot of people on here fast and you're going to receive some consecutive breakthroughs. When you fast, you're going to get some goodwill, some good news, some good breaks. Amen. You know, favor means kindness. A lot of people, you just uh, feel like nothing that good ever happens to you. But when you fast, you want to get the favor of God on your life. And you're going to receive some kindness. When you fast, you're going to get some honor. Listen, God is going to give you, you know, uh, favor with him and with man. See, a lot of people you got favor with God. But you're not going to get favor with men until you go on that fast. Then God is going to put your name. Maybe I'm prophesying to myself tonight. God is going to put your name in the right people's mouths. He's going to make you uh, cross the right person's path. Jesus. That is the power of fasting. You're going to get some favor in your life. When you fast, you're going to get favor and you're going to get preference. How many of y'all want to be, I'm telling you somebody's preference listen when you go to a uh you know to a restaurant i just want to bless you you know something about you you know some of you you're you're getting ready to get blessings you're not even qualified for some of you don't even got no credit you know and in the favor of god because you went on that fast god will do something supernatural in your life where you know you don't even have to have credit you just get in the house you get in a new car how do i know jesus because god blessed me with a new car in september jesus that's that's god that's the power of fasting amen so, I went on a fast a few times in my life to get some favor with some people of influence. I went on a fast a few times in my life, and this is something else. You know, this, listen, a lot of people right now, God, I need to go to the next dimension. I, I want to uh, operate in the supernatural. This is somebody crying out right now. I'm picking you up in the spirit. God, I want to operate in the supernatural. I want miracles to flow through me. Listen, you're not going to get certain anointings, and you're not going to see certain things until you fast. Until you fast. Amen. I didn't start operating in word of knowledge until one day the Lord told me to do a seven day fast. And I was like, seven days. But listen, when God tells you to fast, he'll give you the grace for it. He'll give you the grace for it. So I did seven days. And then after I got off the fast, I started getting word of knowledge as never before. To the point where I'm feeling everything everybody's feeling. So even right now in my walk, I cannot go in a sick, I cannot go in a room around somebody sick. Because the, the anointing of God on my life will just, you know manifest and he wants to pray for the sick people all right it happens all the time went home to north carolina you know i didn't know my mom had arthritis she had arthritis in the knees but she was around me then my knees started hurting and then i'm like mom is your knees hurting you know and she said yeah and if you pray boom the fire got hit her she got healed on the spot why did it happen because of fasting because god told me to do a seven day fast and then i begin to operate in something different all right so you know esther let's talk about esther right quick Esther, she needed favor with the king. My God, she needed some favor with the king. See, you know, even though she was the queen, she was not allowed. Nobody was allowed to just go into the courts like that. She had to get permission. She could have been executed, but she was brave. She said, okay, I'm going to do a three-day fast. You know, no food, no water. I'm just going to just do a dry three-day fast. So that's what she did. She fasted, you know, and she got favor with the king because there was a wicked, 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 wicked man named Haman. And he was, his plan was to eliminate all the Jews but because Esther, she's a brave woman. She fasted for three days. 
and God gave her favor with the king and she saved the Jews. She saved the Jews. I want to prophesy as she begin to fast. God is getting ready to give you favor. And I'm telling you, God is going to raise you up as a deliverer. And God's going to send you to save your family. God's going to send you uh, to change the school system. God is going to send you to change the community. God is going to send you to, to shake the gates of hell. God's going to send you to, to change the nation to impact the world. That's the power of fasting. Amen. So, uh, what is this? Number six. Yes, number six. I don't know if I can get into all this. This is deep. This teaching is deep. All right. The next number six advantage of fasting is some answers to prayers. How many of y'all need some answers to prayers? How many of y'all on here? You need God to do it right now. You can't have a four. Listen, a lot of people have been praying, 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 and nothing is happening, and you feel like you're stagnant. But as you begin to fast and cope with that thing with some prayer, you're getting ready to get some answers to some, woo, some prayers. Amen? You know, can I testify right quick? I feel like testifying. Every time I testify, when we testify, we get the devil a black eye. See, the word of God says the enemy is come by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. So I want to testify. I want to get, get God's praise and glory tonight. All right. So one time I was down to my last $5. I said, God, this ain't right. God, you say it's going to sustain me. I went on a three-day fast. And I, was, I wrote some details. I said, God, when I do this fast, I need you to promise me that, you know, you're going to always sustain me and that I will never get down this low again. When I say I got off that fast, woo! Y'all ain't ready for this. I got a financial breakthrough. Look at God. See, at the time when I went on that fast, I have a show on Saturdays, Warfare Strategies. I needed that thing paid off. You know, God paid that thing off for the rest of the year. Amen? God paid that thing off for the rest of the year. Amen? That is powerful. I want to prophesy. As you begin to fast, you're going to get a breakthrough. You're going to get some answers to prayers. Jesus, I feel like running around this thing. All right, so Daniel, he fasted. Daniel fasted. Uh, Pastor Jennifer talked about this. I'm not going to go into this. I suggest you watch everybody's replay. But Daniel fasted, and he prayed for understanding of a vision. And, you know, Archangel Michael visited him or whatever 21 days later, and ha, he got an answer. All right, this is the one I want to talk about. Strategy number seven, overcome temptation. Overcome temptation. Pa uh, Pastor Jennifer hit on this. You know, temptation. What is temptation? It's something pleasing to your flesh. It's something you have an urge. A lot of people right now, you have you're being tempted of the devil. You're being tempted. Something that's satisfying to your flesh. Um, you know, you have an urge. And listen, when you fast, you're gonna overcome those urges. Listen, you know, as a single woman, hallelujah, you know, I gotta still live a festive lifestyle. Amen. Singles on here, you don't have to go fornicate when you get those urges. You need to crucify your flesh. I'm gonna be honest with somebody because somebody's getting some urges. Amen. Somebody get some urges, and when you begin to fast, it's going to, whoa, kill that flesh. So somebody said, I'm going to kill this flesh, whoa, so I can have the power of God flow through my life, so I can have communion with the Holy Spirit, so I won't have to grieve the Holy Spirit, all right? So, you know, uh, temptation, it's like an impulse. It's something luring. It's, it's drawing you to sin. It's seduction. It's enticement. You know, that's horrible. You, but listen, but when you fast... Woo, you're going to put that flesh under subjection, so let me hurry and get through this. All right, so um, Cedric hit on this in Matthew, in Matthew 4 and 1. And this is deep. I don't know if I can get into it right quick, but so I'm going I'm to talk really, really fast. All right, so watch the replay. I just want you to receive right now. All right, so Jesus was led in the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. All right, so he fasted 40 days, 40 nights, and then the enemy come to him. But let me tell you something. Write the scripture down. This is very important. 1 John 2, 16. 1 John 2, 16, it, it mentions three things that we got to overcome, and fasting helps us overcome, all right? You know, uh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Those are some of the things we got to overcome, and this is what Jesus overcame when he was fasting, all right? So, Jesus, he overcome the lust of the flesh, all right? So, the, he had to deny his hunger. He was hungry for fasting 40 days, and here come the devil. Uh, I'm reading out of Matthew 4. I don't have time to really break it down because I got to flow. All right, here come the devil. If you're hungry, turn these stones into to bread. All right, but listen, he Jesus fasted with that thing. He, he, he prayed, all right? He prayed, and he said the word of God. See, listen, you cannot fight the devil in your flesh. You got to fight the devil in the spirit. You got to fight the devil back with word. And looking at the life of Jesus, 
Jesus and the things he had to go through and the temptation, he fought back with the word of God. So he says, it is written that men should not live by bread alone. So you need to say this when you're hungry, when you're fasting, when you feel like you're about to break your fast. Say, men should not eat by bread and live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. All right. So Jesus had to, uh, come, you know, um, overcome the, the desires of the eyes, the lust of the eyes. What was the lust of the eyes? See, the devil took Jesus up on this high mountain and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. He said, I'll give this all to you if you discern me, bow down and worship me. But once again, Jesus said, you know, uh, get thee behind me, Satan. You know, it is written that I should worship the Lord thy God and him only will I serve. All right. So Jesus, one more thing before I, you know, in this thing, you know, he had to overcome the temptation of pride of life, pride of life. You know, the enemy gets a lot of people with pride. What do I mean? Listen, when God starts really using you, the enemy want to come and put thoughts of pride in your, 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 your head, but you got to cast that thing down. All right. So fast and we'll get that pride up out of you. All right. That stubborn demon of the bite and we'll get that out off of you. So listen, um, the devil took him to a holy city and he set him, him high on a pinnacle and he said, if you're the son of man, you know, throw yourself down and send the angels. You know, see, the devil knows some word, too. He said, if you know, he, 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 the devil said, for it's written, you should give your angels charge over thee, and they should bear you up. And you said, that's your foot against the stone. So, listen, the, the, the devil was trying to uh, tempt Jesus. You know, Jesus could have been prideful. Yeah, I am God in the flesh. Yeah, I can just do this. I can play with death. You know, nothing going to happen with me. That's pride. But Jesus said, no. Jesus fought back with the word. He fought back with the word. All right. Amen. And he said, it is written, that should not tempt thy Lord, thy God. That should not tempt thy Lord, thy God. So, amen. So let me just recap right quick. Um, we talked about the seven advantages of fasting. Number one, uh, first advantage is guidance. Uh, next one is protection. Next one is some deliverance. Next one is hearing from God. The next one is some favor. The next one is some answers to prayers. And the next one is overcoming some temptation. All right. So, listen. Is anyone on here, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Is anybody on here um, that don't know Jesus as the Lord and Savior? Put one. Put one. If you felt this word did something to you. All right. Put a one up here. Maybe you backslid. And you just want to get it right with God tonight. Put a two. Come on, people of God. You know, one, if you don't know Christ, two, if you just want to rededicate your life. Amen? Hallelujah. Listen to me. I almost died. I almost died. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I almost died like, what, 10 years ago. You know, the devil tried to take me out. Then um, I was on my way to work to slide down a pole, and the devil said, you're going to die today. And, uh, you know, 10 minutes later, I felt death for the first time. I felt death for the first time. And sure enough, my sister had given me a Bible two weeks prior. Give me a Bible two weeks prior. For some reason, I put it on my passion to see. But I never forget, while I was at that uh, car accident scene, a fireman handed me this Bible. And he handed me a Bible saying, here, young lady, this saved your life. So I knew then that God was real. I knew he was real. All right, so number two, just repeat after me. Say, so Jesus, the person that put number two, I make you Lord and Savior of my life. Come into my heart. You said in Romans 10, 9, that if I confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior, if I confess that he's uh, been raised from the dead, I shall be saved. I shall be saved. God, I just rededicate my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. You know that the angels in heaven are rejoicing. You know, um, I, I backslid before. I'm going to be honest with you, but I want you to forgive yourself. I want you to forgive yourself. Amen. You know, see, there's no condemnation in those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation in those in, in, in Christ Jesus. Amen. You got to forgive yourself. God is forgiving you. You know, as far as the east is from the west, so are your transgressions from him. All right. So God has for, literally forgiven you. So forgive yourself. Get connected to a local uh, 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 body that's going to feed you the word of God. Amen. All right. And remember, live a fasted lifestyle. Just because it's the first of the year and people are fasting corporately, you know, do above and beyond. And watch God move miraculous in your life. All right. So make a commitment. God, I want to live a fasted lifestyle. Give me revelation. Give me instructions. And show me how often I should fast. All right. All right. God bless you.